It's episode 44 of the Keto for Women show. You're listening to the Keto for Women show, and I'm your host and nutritionist, Sean Miner. This show is designed to empower women to find their own expression of the keto diet to maximize their health and happiness. Now let's get started with today's episode. Hey there, friends. Welcome back to Keto for Women, episode 44. Thanks for joining me as always. And today, we are talking about a very, very specific topic that you may be thinking you don't really even need to listen to, not a big deal, not something you're concerned with. But I'm here to tell you that you should be. You definitely should be. Honestly, whether you're keto or not, whether you're female or male, no matter who you are, we as people living in the world that we currently live in in 2018 and being exposed to the toxic burden that we are in 2018, we all need to be thinking about our liver health. Now, why it's something that we talk about on a keto show, we'll talk about that coming up. But it is definitely a very important thing for us all to consider. And so we're going to take a whole episode to do so today. And I know I've been kind of hinting at this coming for a few weeks now. So here it is. You don't have to wait any longer. It's right here for you. Before we do that, let me just chat a little bit about some updates here. The first one that I want to mention is the addition of a brand new partner to the Keto for Women show. This is a company I have been super, super loving for a long time, and I'm so happy that we are now partnering up so I can share my love with you all, and that is the Triboli Burger line. I don't know if you all have seen this line of really amazing frozen burger patties. They are in Whole Foods, soon to be in Target. So they're definitely out there, but I don't know if you've tried them yet. And if you haven't, now is your chance because we're partnering and they're, of course, giving us Keto for Women listeners a really awesome deal. So here's a little bit about Tribali Foods. They are individually wrapped four ounce burger patties that are frozen. Now, what makes them cool is that they haven't taken out the importance of really good, high-quality, nutrient-dense meats just because they're frozen. So you're still getting grass-fed, grass-finished burgers, free-range chicken, everything's organic, and they're very transparent about their sourcing and where all of this meat comes from, which you know I am a huge fan of, and I think that's really, really important really goes along with what we're talking about today. We're going to talk more about meat quality later today and where you're getting your meat and what it has been fed and that kind of thing. And they've considered all of that with these Tribali burgers. So I'm very excited for that. Now, what's great is that they haven't compromised the flavor just because they have really worked on the quality of the meat. So there are three flavors in these burger patties. There's chipotle chicken, which is my absolute favorite, and then Mediterranean and umami flavored beef patties. They're so good. Like I said, I'm a huge fan. They're really great to just have around and have them in your freezer for times when either you forgot to make some food for dinner or lunch or you don't have anything in the fridge. Like I always have them available and it's really nice like on days when I come back from travel and I haven't had a chance to get to the store yet, then I know I have Tribali Foods in my freezer that I can easily just pull out, put it on the pan, and it's done in 10 minutes. They're really, really nice and convenient, and I adore them. So I'm very excited to have them partner. Now, of course, like I mentioned, we do have a coupon code for you. So if you want to try Tribali Burgers, highly recommend getting all three flavors and you deciding what's your favorite. And it's just nice to have that ability to mix and match too with the flavors. So get all three. Regardless of what you choose, you get 15% off your order by using the code keto for women That's keto the number for women at checkout when you go to tribalifoods.com. That's T-R-I-B-A- lifoods.com. Use coupon code KETO, the number four women, and you get 15% off your order. Can't wait for you to try them. 
Now on the business front, I just want to quickly mention, I know I've had a lot of interest in the May Fat Burning Female Project, which I'm so excited you're all interested. Those of you who have not already gone through and become part of the tribe, you have a chance in May and that's coming up really quickly. I know it's only mid-April, but man, do these weeks fly by, at least in my world and I'm pretty sure in your world too. So I just want to make sure that you all know that the Fat Burning Female Project May edition Enrollment is May 1st. It's a one-day enrollment. We all enroll on the same day because it sells out every single time. So we enroll on the same day, and then we start on the same day as well. So we start May 7th, which is the following Monday. However, you will get all of your course materials for that first week on May 5th. So it just is a really quick turnaround. We all do everything together. For those that are new to the podcast, which I know there are quite a few, if you want to know more information about Fat Burning Female, I'll talk about it a little bit in upcoming weeks. But there's a lot of information just in past episodes too, and specifically in episode 16. I spend the first 25 minutes talking about the course. And so I don't want to go into super big detail now since I've already done that for everybody. But it is a six-week course where we take you into the process of becoming keto adapted in a safe approach with a bunch of women who are doing it together or have already done it and are there to help you. And with me, which you'll have access to me and be able to ask questions and get your answers and feedback and just overall support. So you're making that transition in the fat burning female keto for women way, which is slowly, safely with enough food, making sure you're doing everything correctly, learning about what it means to be in ketosis and what your body's doing during that whole process. And it's just a ton of fun. So we have a great time. I do actually have a really big announcement coming up with the new May course that I will be sharing probably next week, actually. Give me one more week to get everything organized, and I will be sharing another option for you with the Fat Burning Female Project. But regardless, I think all you ladies should at least consider it if it's something where even you already are in ketosis, but you want to be with a community of ladies who are working on their health, and you want to make sure you're doing keto correctly for you and all that good stuff. We do all of that there. So whether you're already in ketosis, you've tried keto before, you haven't tried yet, but you're thinking about it, or maybe you haven't even thought about it, maybe now you should. (laughs) And we can do that in May together. So that's coming up. And then I know I already mentioned this too, but anyone who joins this May class, and then of course, all the other groups that I've done over the past year and a half, we all are now a tribe. There is over 600 of us, and every one of you gets an invitation to join me on the Fat Burning Female Retreat coming up in September. So keep that in mind, too. I mean, I really, I think it's probably the only women-based keto retreat. It might be the only keto retreat out there where we do have a whole weekend together just hanging out and doing keto things and expanding our knowledge and building a community. And that's really what I want to do here within this really large, really confusing keto community is build a smaller one that we all have kind of equal, very similar goals in mind and similar ideas of what keto means to us and the lifestyle we want to live. I just want to create a community around that. I think that's a really, really great space to be in for all of us. And we're going to do that in person all together in September. So that's coming up too. I cannot even tell you how excited I am for that. Myself and my friend who's my business manager, We've been chatting about it for the past few weeks and getting everything organized because enrollment for that does also start in May. So we have a very short period of time to get everything organized for you. But the things that we're going to do and what we're planning, it's just going to be the best. So I hope everyone can at least consider joining and make sure you're part of the Fat Burning Female Project community in order to do so. So I think that's it as far as announcements go. I do want to take a quick minute. It's been definitely more than a few episodes, but I used to give you a little tip for cooking and just anything keto or kitchen related. And it's so funny that I do that because 
if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, you know that I'm super basic when it comes to my food. I don't think anything through before I make it. I just kind of try things and they work. And then that becomes my food for the week. So I'm not much of a recipe person or anything like that. Although, quick side note, I will say, I keep forgetting to say this on the podcast, I will say that if you're still looking for a ranch dressing recipe, go to my website, and get the recipe. I have had the best feedback from that little recipe, which is so funny because I had such a debacle creating the thing and getting it posted for you all. But it's totally making up for it by everyone's reaction to it. So lots of people becoming addicted to my ranch recipe, which I'm glad I'm not the only one. I'm glad I'm not crazy. And it really is as good as I thought. So go ahead and go over to seanminer.com and grab that ranch dressing recipe if you're still looking for it. But that was a side note. What I really wanted to say is that I'm not much of a recipe creator. So these are just some basic tips that I can give you. And my one for this week is something that I've done now for two weeks. And it was because basically I was moving. I hadn't had veggies in days because I didn't want to go to the store and get all the vegetables and then have to move them all over to the next place with the rest of my stuff. So I was kind of scraping by there for a few days with very little veggies. And a lot of eating out, which I'm lucky to have some really great sources of keto-friendly and paleo-friendly and high-quality foods here in Boulder. But that's a different story. But I really wanted vegetables. So as soon as I was kind of settled here in my new place, I went to the grocery store and got so many veggies. That's pretty much all I got was just veggies because I was craving them like mad. And so I had a bunch that I needed to use pretty quickly, obviously. You know, they don't stay around that long. So I made a slaw. And so slaws are something that I make pretty much every week during the summer because they're a very summery type of food and they just go well with everything. So it's kind of getting to be that time here a little bit, although it snows like pretty much every other day here right now. So we're kind of in between where it's like 60s and 70s and then it snows the next day and then it's 60s and 70s again. But that's to be expected in spring here in Colorado. So one of the many reasons why I love it here. But I did a slaw with all the veggies that I had gotten from the store and it turned out really well. And it just reminded me that that's such an easy way to get a lot of different color and variety of vegetables in one sitting, in one meal, which is, again, something we're going to talk about when we do talk about the liver today. So basically, for me, what I did, I did zucchini cabbage, which I did purple cabbage or red cabbage, however you think of it, green onions, carrots, and radish. And then I put cilantro in there. And then I put salt and a squeeze of half a lemon and then a bunch of olive oil. So you can do olive oil, avocado oil, whichever the liquid type oil is that you prefer. Just put a bunch of that in so that obviously it's making it keto. It's also making it delicious and very liquidy, which is nice. So just make sure you're using like lemon juice, lime juice. You can even use apple cider vinegar, which I've done for the more acidic flavor that we need. I've done that before. And then salt is definitely important just, of course, to season it. But the vegetables that are raw, it makes them a little bit softer and especially as you eat them in coming days. And that's something I also want to point out about these slaws is they last at least three or four days. They're just as good, if not better, the next few days because all of the flavors kind of marry and you may have to add in more oil just because everything gets absorbed, but really great to have around for leftovers too. And so I a lot of times just eat them as a side dish, but you can also put them on top of like burgers, like your Trevally burger, or like a pork chop or a steak or something like that too. Or I was putting it on salad as well. So I had a lettuce base and then I had the slaw and then I was putting ground beef on top of it. So just a really great way to bump up the nutrients in your meal because it's all about getting that variety of color from your vegetables. That's where we get the phytonutrients that we really, really need a good balance of. So just different ways to get in more and different kinds of vegetables. Of course, as I always say, that's one of the biggest things I see within the ketogenic community for women, especially, but definitely men aren't out of this category as well. It's just that's who we're talking to today is that we're not eating enough vegetables. I say this all the time, but I want to just keep reiterating that if you think you're eating enough vegetables, eat more. (laughs) 
That's all I can say. There's no quota that you're going to overhit by eating more vegetables. You're not going to be doing yourself any negative impact by eating more vegetables. You're only going to provide more benefit the more veggies you eat. And yes, they have carbs, right? But more than likely, you're not going to be eating so many that it kicks you out of ketosis, especially when you're having all the fat with them, which is what I recommend. So just go ahead and eat those veggies. Try a slaw and let me know if you do. Make sure you tag me over on Instagram or Facebook if you do make something and take a photo of it. I love seeing that, of course. But be on the lookout for mine too, because I'm going to be making them all summer and I show you how to do that over on my Instagram stories or my Facebook stories when I do. So that's where I actually show how I make things. And then the actual Instagram or Facebook post is where I just show the finished products, which looks beautiful. And a lot of times I went through a lot of other things to get to the point where it looked beautiful. But also remember with the slaw, you're either, so I shred, like I'll shred the zucchini with a shredder. And the same thing goes with the radish and and carrot too. But You're also just chopping things really finely too. So keep that in mind. That's a little PS about making slaw, chopping them really finely. All right, enough chitter chatter. Let's get on with talking about our liver. So like I mentioned, you may be thinking, why the heck do we care about our liver health? Why are we having a whole podcast on keto for women talking about our liver? And it's because we need to badly. And if you listened to last week's episode with Vivica, she mentioned the issue of toxicity and how important that is in her practice. We've had other guests I know talk about how big of an issue that is in their practice, and I've talked about it. We have got to take care of our liver and we've got to look closer at our toxicity level and how that may be impacting our health. And like I said, for anybody, just in the year that we live in and in the society that we live in and we've grown up in, we've grown up in a world with a lot of toxins that quite honestly, we can't really control a lot of them. But there are some really important ones that we can control. And I think it is our duty as women who care about their health to do what you can do to control that situation because it's going to make a huge difference in your overall health, especially in your liver health not only now, but in the future. So we really want to talk about that today. And of course, I mean, why do we care specifically about our liver health as keto for womeners? Well, because the liver is responsible for breaking down our fats into fatty acids. That's one of the biggest reasons. So we need to have a really good functioning liver in order to digest our fats. And we're eating more fats now because we're keto, right? So you need to make sure that you are really working on that liver health. And that's something that every single person in the Fat Burning Female Project takes a liver support supplement because you're going to need that as you start increasing your fats and eating more fats, you have to make sure that you're digesting those. And so for a lot of us, whether we have awesome liver health or not, it's still a transition period. And there still is that need to support the liver in the process of becoming keto adapted. And for some continuing on with that, even once you are keto adapted, if you still notice some issues with your fat absorption, you might need to be on a support a little bit longer, which is totally fine and very cool and normal. So don't worry about that if you need to be on it. And we're going to talk more about how you can support your liver, both with supplements and just with other things coming up. So I do want to start with just a little bit of very basic education, I guess, about the liver, just so that you have an idea. I know a lot of us already know how important our liver is for our health, but we may not know exactly how important it is. I mean, it is such an amazing, fascinating organ, in my opinion. It is one that has over 300 different functions in your body. So it's not just responsible for being in the digestive system and releasing bile when you need it to break down fats. That's not its only responsibility. It also is responsible, obviously, we are talking about toxicity today. It's responsible for taking toxins and converting them into these harmless things that our body can actually recognize or just won't actually hurt our body. So without the liver taking that toxin and turning it into something harmless, 
we would be dead, of course, we would be extremely toxic, and we would die, right? So really important that our liver has that ability to convert those toxins that we do face on a daily basis, almost on a minute by minute basis. Now, obviously, a process is alcohol, we're all very familiar with that. And the role that the liver plays when we do drink alcohol, and how important it is to be able to process that and eliminate it efficiently. It also is really important when it comes to medications, whether that be over-the-counter or prescription medications, it gets rid of the breakdown of those medications. It gets rid of that. So again, it's almost like this thing where it's protecting your body from any sort of harm by getting rid of those byproducts. Like I said, obviously, fat metabolism and the production of bile, super important. Also important for glycogen storage and release. So we're all pretty familiar with that process as people who are trying to lower the amount of glucose storage, obviously, in the form of glycogen in their body by being keto adapted. The liver is responsible for storing that glycogen and for when it's time to release that glycogen, turn it into glucose and release into the bloodstream for energy purposes, which is also a kind of an important thing for us to be aware of as keto people. The liver also stores vitamins and minerals until we need it. So again, really important for us to stay balanced is to have this appropriate amount of vitamins and minerals at any given time. And the liver has the ability to store a lot of those until we need it, which is super awesome. And again, something that we want our liver to be working appropriately in order for that to happen in order for the rest of our body to stay in homeostasis. It's also part of the breakdown of protein in the digestive system as well, and also responsible for converting this protein into usable amino acids for our body. And another big one, especially when we're talking about women, but honestly, men are not clear of this by any means. The liver plays a really important role for our hormones. So whether those hormones are just natural in your body what your body is producing, it's responsible for kind of recycling and either releasing them as waste or converting them into free forms of hormones, very much plays a big role in our hormone balance. But also, if you are someone who is on synthetic hormones, so birth control pill or hormone replacement therapy, really huge factor in that too. So something to keep in mind as far as just If you're someone dealing with hormonal imbalance, definitely your liver should play a forefront role in your balancing of those, which is something we do in the Happy Hormones Project. We do a liver cleanse because it is so important. It's really the first step to balancing your hormones is to make sure that your liver can handle those hormones and get you balanced out. And also one of the biggest toxins that we face, which we'll talk about later. But one of the biggest toxins we face are these xenoestrogens and really just other hormones in our water and our meat and places you don't even know exist, like in our plastics, right? So having the ability for our liver to see those as toxins and not actual hormones is really important too. Now let's move on to talking about keto more specifically, because like I said, we need a good functioning liver in order to really make sure we are breaking down those fatty acids and that we're producing really awesome, good, clean bile and that we are releasing that bile when it's time to release in order to break down our fats after a fatty meal. So that's all important, but I also want to talk about what role keto plays in having good liver health because it is also important. And really, a big question I get is, is keto safe for your liver? Because we are obviously increasing our fats, and some people have heard that you won't be able to digest all those fats. It will cause a burden on your liver and you shouldn't do keto, (laughs) really, all the naysayers out there, right? So I do want to just reiterate why it is good to be keto, and it is good to be keto for your liver health. So first of all, we need to create really awesome, clean, free-flowing bile, and we create that in the liver. And two of the main ingredients of bile are cholesterol and electrolytes. So basically, we need fat to produce bile that breaks down fat, right? So it's a cycle. So we need a good amount of dietary fats 
to then create the bile. And I love also bringing up the electrolyte thing too. We need a healthy balance of electrolytes, which is something we talk about a lot in the keto world is just really working on balancing those electrolytes because they do quite often become imbalanced as we make this keto transition. And even beyond, I still take electrolytes and I've been keto for over a year and a half. So really important to bring that electrolyte thing in there because I do want to make sure that everyone is thinking about that still when you are keto adapted or if you are making the transition now. But back to this whole system, we need these really good fats to make the bile to break down the fat. So Increasing your dietary fat intake is going to increase your bile production, and especially because us as Keto for Womeners are eating really good, high-quality, nutrient-dense fats, that's going to produce this really awesome bile. So we're going to have the amount of bile that we need and the quality of bile that we need by being keto, it's going to adapt and take care of itself. So you're still going to be able to break down those excess fats you're now eating. You're going to be just fine. Now, there is a little bit, like I said, with fat burning female, we do all focus on our liver health during that process. And it is because what happens, especially if you've ever eaten a low fat diet, which I think most of us have, let's be honest, or a poor fat diet where you are relying on vegetable oils and all these other rancid oils. If you've ever done that, then your bile production has probably slowed down or it's gotten just viscous, just not good quality, not the quality that we need in order for it to flow freely. It can get kind of sludgy and sticky and not what we like. So it's poor quality basically because of either the poor quality fats or the low fats. If that's ever been a trend in your life, then you will have a little bit of time for that production to pick up and for that quality of your bile to pick up. So in that time, that's where supporting the liver is really important. You may need to actually support the production of bile with some ox bile, you know, there's some things that you can do to make that transition smoother, but your body does relearn that. And then, like I said, you're going to go through that whole cycle very easily and your liver's not going to have an issue. So it is just kind of a transition thing that may need to happen for some of you as you are beginning to eat more fat. Now, another question I get so, so, so often, and I know I've talked about it on the podcast before, but we'll chat about it again here quickly, is the role of the gallbladder and if you can be keto without a gallbladder. So here's where we understand that the liver is what makes your bile, and it's also what gets the signal from the digestive system to release bile to the small intestine so it can break those fats down into fatty acids. The gallbladder is storing the bile, so it's responsible for storing bile. That's it. It's not responsible for making it. So no matter what, even if you don't have a gallbladder, you're still making bile, and you're still going through that whole process of fat breakdown. You just may not have as much stored as someone who does have a gallbladder, but that just means that your liver is probably making it on a maybe slightly faster clip or something like that, but more than likely, you're going to be just fine, especially after you make that transition. You do support the liver during the process of increasing your fats, and it may be a case where you do have to support your liver for a longer period of time. You may need to take some ox bile that's totally normal and a really great resource to do in order to break down those fats, but it definitely doesn't mean that you can't be keto just because you don't have a gallbladder. So please, please, please keep that in mind. I think it would be a really good place to be and to start that healing process regardless of your gallbladder situation. So another thing that I think is really important to note, I did mention the storage and release of glycogen from the liver and the responsibility that it has there. It's kind of cool and kind of a fun thing, I think, to think about where because we are really working on controlling our blood sugar as being keto, 
We're also kind of helping our liver out in that situation by giving it a little bit of a rest, by making it not have to work so hard to store the glycogen and then get that signal to release it as glucose and then bring the glucose back in and store it and then release it again. So I don't know. I mean, I actually don't even know if that's scientifically what's happening when we're keto, if we are giving our liver a rest or if it's just something I like to think about, but we might as well think about it that way. It makes sense, I think, that it would have to work a little bit less on that particular blood sugar function and be able to spend more time working on some more important things that we have going on, which like I said, and as you now know from everything we've talked about so far, kind of important things that the liver is doing. And to take one of those roles and make it not have to work so hard at one of those is a good thing, in my opinion. So we're also doing that as being keto. So props to us. Now, quickly, please keep in mind with all of this, I am not a doctor, I'm a nutritionist, so I'm not going to give you this really detailed information on what we're about to talk about, but I do want to just mention some things that can go wrong with your liver health, just so that you're aware of what could be happening to your liver now or in the future if you don't take this stuff seriously. So the first thing is fatty liver, which I know a lot of you out there listening have been diagnosed with non-alcoholic fatty liver. That is basically regardless, whether it's alcoholic or non-alcoholic, it is a fat buildup in your liver cells. Now, if it's just fatty liver, then they have determined alcohol to be the culprit. If it's non-alcoholic fatty liver, which is quite common, then genetics are a big case of that. Also, certain medications, being on a high fructose diet, and insulin resistance. So that's why there are a lot of people coming to keto with a non-alcoholic fatty liver disease diagnosis because they probably have been insulin resistant. They've been on a high carb diet that was unintentionally high fructose because that's quite common when we are especially eating processed carbohydrates and high fructose corn syrup, then that will easily show up as that. So we have a lot of people trying to reverse out of that, which is Great. I mean, keto is a great place to be for those with this diagnosis in order to hopefully kind of back out of that and get rid of some of that fat buildup too. Cirrhosis is the scarring of liver cells. This usually happens because of an excess of toxins or alcohol or something along those lines. There's hepatitis, which is infection and inflammation of the liver, also really can be quite common too. And the one that we're really going to talk about today is just having liver congestion and maybe some liver damage. So both of those things, they're not something you would necessarily be diagnosed with by a doctor, but they're things that happen, you know, and especially with liver congestion, there's a lot of us dealing with that. And you may or may not know, right? So regardless, it's a really good time to just think about the things that you can do for your liver health whether your liver is like the healthiest thing on earth or not so much. And that's where the liver congestion can kind of come in prior to these other more serious diagnoses that I just mentioned. So we can kind of back out of it now and not have to worry about this stuff in the future, which is what we're going to talk about now. We're going to talk about how to support your liver, how to kind of quote unquote detox your liver, all that stuff, and things that you can do on a daily, regular, for the rest of your life basis to really help out this situation. Because like I said, and as you all have seen from having other practitioners on, and I actually have another one coming up that talks about toxicity, it's a real thing. It's something that we see in a lot of our clients, and it's something that they're dealing with that they don't even know they're dealing with, and something we really need to start taking seriously. So you all have the ability, whether you're working with a practitioner or not, right here, right now, to learn more about your liver health and start doing something about it. So let's get into this. First of all, we've got to talk about food, right? Because I'm a nutritionist, I love food, and I do believe that food is medicine. And especially when it comes to your liver, you can do so much good stuff for your liver just by eating different foods, changing the foods on your plate. The liver loves bitter things. So any sort of bitter green that you can put into your diet doesn't even have to be every single day, but maybe once a week you put in some dandelion greens or bitter greens or 
beet greens, put those into a smoothie or put some on top of your salad, something like that where they can kind of mix in, especially if you don't like the bitter flavor like me, you got to kind of hide it. But really important, that bitter flavor does really great things for your liver health. Also citrus, the liver loves citrus as well. So lemon, lime, orange, grapefruit, just put a little squeeze of that in your water or in your salad dressings or in a smoothie, anything. Just put a little bit of citrus, which is a really easy one to do, and it will also make that bitter taste a little better, perhaps. So maybe you can combine the two and actually make it taste good. Root vegetables are really important. So things like beets and carrots and turnips. And a lot of times we shy away from these types of vegetables as keto people because we've been told that they're high in carbs, they're high in sugar, we shouldn't eat them. And that's not true. That's not true. I mean, yes, they are higher in carbs than, say, lettuce, but having a little bit of root vegetable here and there is more than likely not going to take you out of ketosis. Now, if you're having an entire plate full of beets and carrots at dinner, then yeah, it might. But if you're just having it as a side item a few times a week, then you're going to be doing way more good than harm to your body. Super, super important. I really like in both cases, although I think carrots are good raw, but definitely for me in all those root veggie cases, I love just chopping them up and roasting them. Roast them in some coconut oil and some salt for say 400, 425 for like a half an hour. And they're so delicious. So something really easy to add into your week are these root veggies. And then, of course, like I mentioned, a lot of them you can use the tips. You can use carrot tips, beet greens, and put those as part of something in your day too. And then you're getting a double whammy. So that's also a really good thing. And then, of course, leafy greens. Yes, salad greens are great, but really also trying to get those dark green veggies like kale and spinach and arugula into your life too. So really starting to mix those up and get as many servings of those as you can per day to help out the liver as well. So I really like to basically, like I said, this is why I started this whole podcast episode with a kind of recipe, if you will, for slaw, because it's all about increasing your vegetables. Increase those veggies for a healthy liver, not to mention the health of the rest of your body, of course, and providing those micronutrients, but definitely when it comes to your liver health, for sure. Now, as I mentioned, in order for us to make this really good, awesome, free-flowing bile, we need healthy fats. Now, you cannot make healthy bile with toxic fats. It doesn't work that way. So if you're still someone who is trying to be keto and doing well with that as far as eliminating the carbohydrates, but you're increasing your fats in the form of, like I said, vegetable oils, canola oils, fast food type items, processed fats and foods, If you're doing that, then you're not doing your body any favor, which I think you already know. And I know it's totally a step in the right direction for sure to get rid of the carbohydrates. But then the next step is to really work on the quality of your fats. Most of you are already doing that and getting the coconut oils and the avocado oils and the extra virgin olive oils. But also even within that, especially things like extra virgin olive oil, that is a very, let's call it picky fat. It really needs to be in the right environment, processed in the right way, stored at the right temperature and not exposed to light and all that stuff for it to be healthy and not harmful. So again, even with these kind of umbrella healthy fats as coconut oil, avocado oil, olive oil, those kinds of fats, but we still also need to make sure that within those fats, The quality is also there too. So if your extra virgin olive oil, for instance, is in a plastic bottle or even a glass bottle that's not darkened, so if it's in a clear plastic or glass bottle, not good because it can easily be damaged just from light. So especially if it's stored on the store shelves, which most of it is what we're buying, then just being on those store shelves and being exposed to the light in the store without it you know, having that shaded colored glass is going to damage that fat. 
So I know there's so many intricacies when it comes to it. Trust me, I know it's super confusing, but that is one place. And really, I think this is the case kind of with everything that I'm talking about, that we can't skimp on the quality to save 50 cents, right? So really make sure the quality of the fats are the best that you can get It's probably not going to be the cheapest one unless they're on a really good sale, which is great. But find that middle of the road. Maybe there is a brand that has this really awesome quality, but also has a great price, right? So keep that in mind for sure with those healthy fats. Also, backing up really quickly to the vegetables, I know you know this, but I want to reiterate These veggies need to be organic. They really should. Again, I know it's something that it's more expensive. However, I do find that especially with the vegetables that are in season for the season, which obviously fall, winter, spring, summer, they all have different vegetables that are growing at that time. If you stay with the seasons, then you likely aren't going to be spending all that much more money for organic produce. It may also mean, and this is what I do, it may also mean that you connect with a farmer, a local farmer, and get a CSA, which I know I've talked about on the podcast before, Community Supported Agriculture. You connect with a farmer, you get their produce, of course, make sure, but look for their standards and how they treat their produce, if any chemicals they use, hopefully none, and really make sure you're finding a truly organic farm. But that's something where you're getting a really good deal on vegetables throughout most of the year, at least depending on where you live, you know, six months of the year, you're getting some really awesome vegetables. So that's something to keep in mind. But please make it a priority to get as many of these vegetables that you're eating to be organic. And really, that goes for anything you're eating. It is super, super important for everyone and your entire family. But we're talking about you right now and we're talking about your liver and that specifically is really important. Before we get any further with this episode, let me take just a second to tell you all about the Ample Ketogenic Meal Replacement Shakes. I'm so excited that this product is now out there. I can't wait for you all to try it. It is the first all-in-one keto meal replacement shake that gets the nutrition from quality, real ingredients, which is so, so, so hard to find in the ketogenic space. You all know how important real food ingredients are for me, and I want to pass that information on to you. And here we now have a really great opportunity to have a meal replacement shake, something that's super easy for us to grab when we're on the go, running errands, don't have time for breakfast, don't feel like cooking, whatever it may be, we now have a place to turn, and that is the ample ketogenic meal replacement shakes. 70% of the calories in this shake come from premium healthy fats such as MCT oil powder, coconut oil powder, things we're already eating on a daily basis anyway. There are only 6 grams of net carbs in each meal. And it comes along with 40 billion CFUs of probiotics, which is like 10 times what you would get by drinking a kombucha. So they're really taking care of our gut health. They're keeping that in check while we're on a ketogenic diet. They have the prebiotic fibers necessary too within this shake to feed the good bacteria in your gut. They've thought of so much. It has potassium and magnesium so that if you're going through the keto flu or you just want to work on your electrolyte balance, which is something we talk about a lot on keto for women, that's taken care of too. And the best part is it actually tastes amazing. I taste so many ketogenic products. Most of them I don't like, so I don't even tell you about them. But I love the flavor of these Ample Shakes. You're going to love it. I can't wait for you all to try it. In order to do so, because they are a sponsor of the Keto for Women show, you lucky listeners get 15% off your order when you go to amplemeal.com and use the coupon code Keto, the number four, women15 at checkout. That's amplemeal.com and use the coupon code Keto, the number four, women15 to get your 15% off your first order. I will make sure to have this information linked in the show notes so you can get easy access to your 15% off. Okay, moving on. So obviously food is the priority. If that's the one thing you take away from this episode, great. Get some organic veggies and get a bunch of them into your life and make a priority towards leafy greens and root veggies and bitter greens and citrus fruits, and we're good. 
And also, I know I say citrus fruits, but first of all, don't be scared of fruit just because you're keto. And second of all, we're just talking about, you know, a squeeze. It doesn't have to be like you're eating an entire orange. If that's something that you're worried would kick you out of ketosis, don't worry about it. We're just talking, you know, a little squeeze and you'll get plenty. Moving on to lifestyle stuff. So of course, we have to talk about alcohol because that's a huge thing that our liver does for us is process that alcohol, like I mentioned. And we all know that. But it's also one of the biggest reasons that liver damage or other liver diseases happen is because of an excess of alcohol. More than likely, if you're keto, you're probably already watching your alcohol intake anyways. And if you're not, then no big deal, especially if you're staying in ketosis and feeling really great. But it is something where you may just want to reconsider how much alcohol you're drinking just for overall health, keto or not. I personally don't think that, and I'm not saying that it needs to be all or nothing, like you can never have a drink again. I don't think that that's a necessary thing to do either, but it's just totally up to you as to what feels like a good amount to maintain the best health possible while still, of course, enjoying a glass of wine here or there with your friends or husband or wife or whoever. So I'm not going to give any sort of goal you should be sticking to when it comes to alcohol because it's totally individualized, but definitely just consider that and make sure, just know there's going to be some trade-off, right, with your health when you do consume alcohol and especially if you're a super moderate drinker, doesn't really matter for the most part, as long as you personally do well with it and you feel okay with it. A big one, though, are the use of both over-the-counter medications and prescription medications. Now, I know a lot of you are on medications because you need to be on them, and I totally get that, and I'm very supportive of that, but there may be some cases and I've seen this quite a bit in my own practice, where people are on medications that they don't actually need to be on. So I really think that it would be worth going to the doctor and having a conversation after you've done your research, after you feel really comfortable having that conversation of, do I actually need to be on this or is there something else I can do? Especially, you know, a lot of us go keto, there's a lot of things that change. And then suddenly things that were a huge deal for you aren't a huge deal for you anymore. So that's when you can really go back to the doctor, say, I've done all of this change in my diet and lifestyle. So do I still need these things? But of course, talk to your doctor. Don't do any of it without consent or without you knowing what's up. Over the counter, Again, that's something that is very individualized, but just make sure that if you are taking over-the-counter medication that you really, really need it. There are a lot of other ways you can go about getting rid of these symptoms that you may need to get rid of without relying on over-the-counter medications. I think essential oils are the best place to turn. Same with herbs and teas and tinctures and things like that to where you can turn if you need help with, say, your PMS or your headaches or something that you're kind of relying currently on over-the-counter medications, you can do something different. So please keep that in mind. It should be a very, very, very seldom case where you need to rely on, say, your Aleve or something like that. Now, of course, with lifestyle, just work out, make sure you get a sweat on, Working out, moving your body is so important for literally every single part of your body, but your liver is a big part of that too. So work out. I know I talk about working out way too much on this podcast, so I'm not going to do it today, but just know that that's how I feel about it. Let's talk quickly about the supplements that you can take in order to help support your liver. So these are all basically supplemental supports. They're herbs that are found in nature whose job is to nourish and support the liver, help with detoxification so that your liver doesn't have as much of a burden there, and just do really good things. So really safe things to take for most of us, and so easy to do in most cases. Some of the herbs I like are milk thistle, dandelion, beet, burdock, artichoke, chlorella. You can also really support your liver by taking amino acids, Some of us may need ox bile, particularly if you don't have a gallbladder. You can take some ox bile for a period of time and, yeah, just really help support that liver. Now, I know I just went through all of that really quickly. Here's a little surprise for you. I'm going to have another 
supplement download PDF attachment to this episode. And so you can get everything I just said as far as supplements and really everything. There's going to be other stuff that I have listed there too, as far as ways to help support your liver in a downloadable PDF attachment. The link to get that will be in these show notes. So I know the supplements are a really important factor for a lot of you. And I know that there's not a lot of guidance when it comes to finding the right supplements for you. And I also know that on the last episode I did with my supplement PDF, the liver support is no longer available. So I actually found a better one. I'm so excited. I found a better one that contains a lot of these different ones I just said these different herbs all in one pill. You only have to take one per day and you're really supporting your liver and getting all these necessary kind of detox help too. So that will be listed on this current supplement download PDF. Okay, so remember, you can get that by going to the show notes. Click on the link. It will ask for your email to send over the PDF and boom, you've got it. You've got everything that I just talked about in this episode in one little PDF download. It's great. Woohoo. So fun. Moving on. I really was excited to do this episode mainly to talk about my sauna because I, for those that you don't know, have a sauna in my apartment. (laughs) It's actually in my closet because my closet's huge, thank God, and I have plenty of room for my sauna and my clothes and still have room. It's great. But I have been using a sauna now for about six months And it is amazing. I love it. I get a lot of questions every time I post about it. And so I wanted to make sure that I had a place within the Keto for Women show to discuss my sauna because I think it's a really awesome tool for a lot of people to use to help support their detox pathways and their liver, but for so many other reasons. For me personally, I really, just in looking back at my life and knowing what I went through with the toxic mold exposure and other types of environments I was living in and the food I grew up with and how much alcohol I drank in college and in my 20s, I just realized how toxic my life was for a good chunk of that life until now, right? Until I finally learned my lesson and did some things to change that. But When I thought about all of that and knowing what I know now and knowing how poorly my body detoxifies, which I found out because of the toxic mold exposure and just with some genetic testing, I don't detox well. And so I personally need all the support I can get. And seeing how sick I got when I was exposed to toxic mold, I never want to do that again. And so I'm willing to do whatever it takes to stay as detoxed as I can, we'll say. And for me, it's really important to have a sauna for that purpose, but also because it's so great for your cells, it's so great for your stress response and to get into parasympathetic mode, which I sometimes have a problem doing, believe it or not. And it's great for your skin and just overall rejuvenation. But it's awesome for your detox because you sweat. It makes you sweat. It is an infrared. So it's a near infrared sauna which is different from a far infrared sauna. I don't know why. I don't know the difference. But in what I was choosing, I chose the near infrared because it has a very, very low EMF output, whereas the far infrared sauna has a high EMF output. And EMFs are electromagnetic frequency. We've talked about those before a little bit and something I can talk about in the future too, but also something that is harmful to your body and harmful to your liver, for sure. So I wanted to keep that level down, and that's why I chose near infrared. But when it's infrared, that means it's a little different than the sauna that you're getting into perhaps at the gym or the hotel or something like that, because it's heating you basically from the inside out instead of heating your skin from the outside and making you sweat that way. It's heating you from the inside, and so you just start sweating from this internal heat, which is really restorative. That's where the healing and this detoxing comes in and really works so well and so quickly is from that kind of internal heat that's being built. And you sweat out those toxins, which is super important. We all have to sweat. Like I said, you should be doing that with a workout, but you can also be doing that in a sauna or in hot yoga or something like that too. But please make sure to get your sweat on the majority of the days of the week, for sure. 
going back to the sauna, I think it's a great addition for most households, I would say. It's just a matter if that's something that you want to do or not. It's super relaxing and I really enjoy it. And I'm really, really happy with my purchase. I will link to where I got my sauna in the downloadable PDF to this episode. Also something to consider that I know Vivica brought up last week and I had a lot of people reaching out to me and being like, oh my gosh, I still drink tap water. So yeah, your water is a concern and you should definitely be filtering your water and it should definitely be more filtration than just a Brita. So just that thing that I used to have back in the day when they first came out, just had one in the fridge all the time. There are a few that I really like. I personally use the Aquasana. I use it for both my drinking water. I have a pitcher that filters water really quickly and I go through the pitcher, probably two pitchers a day. It's really easy, but it's just me. So it doesn't take that much. And then I also have a shower filter. So every time I take a shower, my water is filtered first just for overall skin health. Our skin is our largest organ and our most absorbent organ. So any toxins that are in our shower water are seeping into our bodies through our skin. So something that's really important, if you don't believe me that your water could be toxic, then you can go to ewg.org, and I will link this also in the PDF, to look at the quality of your water where you live. But regardless, trust me, the way that we live today, what we're exposed to, the chemicals that are in the pesticides and the hormones and just water itself is chemically treated. But then there's also heavy metals in water. You do not want to be drinking it and you do not want to be putting it on your skin. So really, really, definitely, please get yourself a really good water filter. Like I said, the Aquasana is what I use. It's very cost-friendly, I think. I will link to the ones that I have in the PDF. But I also really like the Berkey system. I've heard really good things about that. I will link to that one too. And you can decide which one is right for you. Now, another big one, beauty products. This is, again, something where you may not even consider You've probably not thought twice about the hairspray that you're using or the makeup you're using or the perfume you're using, but most likely they are chemicals and your body does not know what to do with that. So that means that your liver is working constantly to try to turn those harmful chemicals into nothing, right? Things that your body won't react to. And that's a full-time job. So again, we're going to have that stuff in our lives for sure, but if we can take that burden away as much as possible with the things we can control, like our makeup, then we're doing our body a lot of favors and our liver, we're just letting it rest a little bit and letting it not have so many tasks. So beauty products, again, you can go to ewg.org if you want to see how toxic your makeup in particular, but also lotions and sunscreens and hair products too. You can go to ewg.org and take a peek at what you're currently using. I think if you can stay within a one or a two on that rating scale, it will give you a rating of all your products, then you're doing good. If you're three through 10, I don't know how high it goes. I've never gotten that high, thank goodness. Then you want to look at switching out some of those things. It doesn't have to be all immediately, but any steps you can take are amazing. So Beauty Counter, of course, I'm sure a lot of you have heard of Beauty Counter. There's a lot of reps out there. I'm not one of them. I don't want to be. (laughs) I have plenty on my plate. So I can't help you, but I do like that brand. I use that for sunscreen and some of my makeups and skincare products. I also really like like Tarte for makeup. I think that is a really good brand. You can get it at places like Sephora. So it is the one that has really good practices within Sephora's lines. And then as far as skincare products, Primally Pure is my absolute favorite. You just have to make this switch. Their stuff is so amazing, specifically their deodorant. Huge fan of their deodorant. Deodorants, like you're just getting from the grocery store, like Secret or whatever, Sure, whatever they're called. Those are extremely harmful to you, especially as women and especially putting them under your arms. There's aluminum in them and they're not good for your health. So it's very important to make that switch to natural deodorant. The only natural deodorant I've ever found to work, like through a workout, through my day, through everything, is Primally Pure's. It is amazing and it smells so good. So get yourself some of their deodorant. I also really like their beauty cream. I put that on my face as my kind of wrinkle cream, I guess. And then I also really like their dry shampoo. 
So it's a powder, dry shampoo, super easy to use. It really, truly works on days where you don't want to shower, you don't have time to shower after the gym or something like that. It really does work, I swear. So I really like those three products, but all of their stuff is just amazing. They also have baby products. So all this stuff should also be taken to your family as well. And so you can get some non-toxic baby products there as well. And the last thing I want to talk about as far as lifestyle stuff goes are cleaning products. Like this is huge. You've got to really think about what you're using to clean your dishes. There's so many different cleaning products out there. Most of them are incredibly toxic. Like if you can barely stand to inhale while you're cleaning the sink or cleaning your bathtub, then that's probably not a good sign, right? And same thing goes with laundry detergent and things like that. If it's a color, not a good sign. You do not want fake colorings in your cleaning products. That's the sign of a very toxic product. So I honestly clean mainly with doTERRA's brand of cleaning products. I can't remember what it's called offhand. Again, I'm not a rep. I don't want to be one. I have enough on my plate, but I can link to the ones that I use. I really think essential oils are great for cleaning and they work really well. Simple white vinegar works so well. I also like borax, which is a very, very old, like one of the first cleaning products on the market, I think, but it's very clean. I like that. I use that for laundry and also cleaning my tub. Then there's just plenty of other lines of clean, safer, more natural cleaning products out there that are not weird blue colors or something like that. So you don't have to be super creative with it. Just again, you may have to pay a dollar or so more to get a more natural product, but it really will be worth it for your health. It's really, really important. Okay, I know I went through all of that really quickly because, of course, I talked too much and we went over on time, but... I hope you now know the importance of taking care of your liver. It is a non-negotiable, huge part of you being the advocate for your health, which is what I want all of you to do as women and as women do in keto. I want you just to take charge of your health and you've got to take charge of your liver health in order to do that. So I hope this really sheds some light on that. Again, a downloadable PDF of everything I just mentioned, kind of all of those ways you can help support and detoxify your body and really work on that liver health. I will have all of that because I know it was a lot of information. I'm pretty sure you're all driving or taking a walk or working out right now, so you're not taking notes. And so I did it for you. As soon as you're done with your drive or walk, download that PDF and it will have links to everything I just mentioned, all the lists of foods you should be trying to incorporate into your week and everything that just makes it a lot easier to digest, pun intended. So of course, that was just an overview. This is not everything, but hopefully a good start for you all to get going on working on your liver forever. Just make this a new lifestyle along with your keto lifestyle. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you all so much for listening. I will be back next week with another Keto Hot Seat episode, getting through all those questions that you asked me so we can get on to some new ones. So take a look for that next week and I will see you then. Bye. Bye.